Hello everyone and welcome back to Tin Lost Gaming and welcome to episode 3 of my playthrough of Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. And we are playing through Ithaca's Children in this playthrough. Um, like I say, episode 3, so we're a bit of a distance into the game. Things are going okay. We'll go across to the, the table in a second. But uh, a couple of things, uh, as, as always at the start of these videos. If you like what I'm doing, uh, that would be really useful if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really does help. Um, and we're heading towards uh, 100 subscribers now, which is really good. Um, any comments, any tips, any tactics anybody's got on, on playing uh, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition would be really useful and it would help me out in the comments. But um, without further ado, let's get across to the table and see where we're at. Okay, so this is the main table. Uh, as previously stated in videos, this, this is a bit of a table hog, uh, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, so I'm doing my best I can to get everything, all of the action on the table. There's quite a few sort of side decks off to the side there, which we use. We don't, don't really need to be on camera, but uh, they're there. I've got a couple of little cheeky new bits here for um, the uh, this playthrough. So we've got the table cam which is a bit more of a close-up view. So we can let's have a quick look and see what's, what's going on. So we have got Preston up at the Innsmouth area there. We've got Kate down at the Central Kingsport area. And uh, we've got Zoe who's about to take on a big Wendigo uh, over there. So in regards to the characters, we've got Preston here. He's currently engaged with a high priest. We've got Kate uh, Winthrop there, who's got loads of spells and bits and bobs going on. And then we've got Zoe Zam Zamorous there, who is our sort of fighter, if you like, and she's sort of gearing up to take on the Wendigo. So, bit of a, like I say, bit of a table hook, but um, hopefully that gives you a bit of a better eye view. And here is the scenario we're playing. Oh, sorry, my hands are a bit shaky this morning. Uh, we've got the Ithaca's children, and we've got three doom on there and actually once we get to four something is going to happen so be interesting to see i don't think we're going to be able to avoid that but there we go that's arkham horror for you okay so where we left off we just completed the mythos phase so now we're going to be moving on to the action phase and i think first things first we're probably going to start off with Preston, who is going to try and deal with this High Priest. So the High Priest, he has got a health of two, he gives us minus one strength, minus one observation, but after we defeat him as part of an attack, he can gain one spell. So, we've got Preston who's focused in strength. Let's just have a look and see what we can do. No, we're just going to go straight up and try and kill it. So he would normally be rolling uh, three strength, so three dice, plus his one for his focus, takes him to four, and he's attacking with his knife, which gets him another dice. That's five in total. We're going to take one away because the priest um, gives us minus one strength. So we're going to be rolling four dice at the priest. We need two successes, it's good. If we could, that would be really good. First roll of the day. Come on, Preston. And we get it. We get it naturally. Five and a six, which is two successes. That's really good. So we kill the high priest. He doesn't give us um, a remnant. So he just goes to the front of the board, um, front of the deck, but he does give us a spell, or does give Preston a spell. So here's the spells. They have been shuffled, but let's do that again. And let's try our very best not to drop any. 
do a cat weasel cut and see what spell that Preston gets he's gonna get the beast within when you perform an attack action you may test law if you pass roll five dice instead of your usual pull ignore all other modifiers Ooh, that's cool okay he gets that So that was Preston's first action. He is going to stay there, and what he's going to attempt to do is ward, because on his spaces there is four doom, five doom in total. When he gets to six, it adds another doom onto the the um, scenario sheet, and that priest has been creating doom like Billio over there. Now ward action that is a law, and he is only two law unfortunately but i think it's worth i think it's worth a shot does he have anything else that gives him no he's got two remnants he's plus in observation plus in strength so no he's just going to get his straight two dice we could take one off that would be good we do we do get one off which is better than nothing and he is actually in a, an area which has got a clue on it so we'll take that off of Preston so that's Preston all done where do we go next um, where do we go next down at I think she's going to do a couple of things well first of all now does she does she ward I've got a couple of choices here. What I'm thinking about is she's got three doom on her space or in her area, neighborhood, maximum is six. And she's got two terror as well. Um, we can try and ward against terror. Effectively, same, same thing. Let's just check. thing that allows us yeah there's an action on the terror one so it's influence influence or law mm. so if, she, if I was rolling the terror I'd be rolling two dice and I'd potentially hopefully get rid of one Three doom in there. Well, we could we could do both, or, or we could. No, I'm going to go for terror. <coughs> going to go for terror. So her influence is two. One success would be nice. She's not cursed or anything. Um, so roll in the dice. Oh, <laughs> the dice are hot today. Box cards. So she's going to take both Terra off of Central Kingsport, which is awesome. And it's going to go back in the token pool. So that was her first action. I'm going to try and stop the Wendigo from spreading Terra in Northside. Um, so I'm going to have a go at uh, exhausting it using the binding spell. Um, yeah, so her binding spell. Oh, sorry. We're on Kate now. Her binding spell that she's got says um, choose one monster on any space and test law. 
you're using that mod as evade modifier. If you pass exhaust that monster, and it does cost us one sanity. Now, I need to turn over the Wendigo's car to see if he's got any modifiers. So he's an epic monster, gives us a remnant. He's got four health plus one for each investigator, so he's got seven health. He gives us minus one strength, minus one evade. Um, so she's going to be rolling. No, we're not trying to evade him. We're just trying to just using that. Oh, using that monster's evade modifier. So he's got an evade of two. So for casting the law, I'll be rolling four dice, I'll be rolling two dice. Ooh. That's, that's risky, but I am going to try and do it. I am going to try and do it. So two dice, needing one five or one six. No. Uh, but that does cost her a sanity. So she's now taken two sanity. But we didn't get to we didn't get to evade it, unfortunately. Oh, hang on a second. We've got Eben's journal. Sorry, and we've got Lucky Cigarette Case. Now, Lucky Cigarette Case doesn't help. Once per round, you may add one to the result of any dice when resolving a test. That doesn't help us with two threes. But we have got Eben's journal you get plus two when casting a spell. So I've got another two dice, so we'll leave those there. We'll roll two more dice. Which we do get it. We get it naturally. We could use the lucky cigarette case. Um, but we don't need to, because we've got the success. So the monster is exhausted. So. That technically is the side for exhausted. Um, I'll turn him like that just because I'm used to when cards are exhausted, I turn them sideways. So we know that he's exhausted. So he's not going to be creating any terror anytime soon. So that was worth it. Need to remember Eben, Eben Hall's journal. So that's Kate done. We then move on to Zoe. So that's got seven health. Was it a minus two? Minus one. He's not going to attack us this turn because he's exhausted. So it's almost like a Oh, right, we need to try and get rid of Cursed first of all. Oh. Zoe's Cursed at the moment. What I'm thinking is to do a ward test just to get rid of that one doom. Zoe's got one doom on her space at the moment. She's just up. She's up here. Um, purely to try and get rid of cursed. Purely just to try and get rid of cursed. Because she's going to be rolling four dice, needing sixes. That's her best, apart from strength, but I don't really want to go in and whiff it. I'd rather be rolling fives and sixes when I'm testing strength. Yep, yeah, okay. So we'll go across to Zoe, and she is going to roll four dice to try and get a six to get rid of that one doom. 
but more importantly, get rid of Cursed. And she does it with two successes. So first things first, this Doom comes off and she gets rid of Cursed, which is gonna, it's gonna help her next turn. Now what else can she do? She's got enough money. Um, she could have a go at doing the war, basically doing the ward in for Terra, because that's at three at the moment. She's only rolling two dice influence. Yeah, let's do that. Now she's rolling fives and sixes. So we'll have a go at the Terra. Just see if we can knock one off, that'd be useful. Um, now, what we could do, because we haven't um, spent our lucky cigarette case, once per round you may add one to the result of any die when resolving a test, which is what we will do. We'll add that one to there to create a five, which is brilliant, which means that she is successful for one. So she's going to knock that three horror down in Kingsport, in Northside. That's going to go down to, sorry, two, three terror going to go down to 2 Terra which should help us when it comes to the test in a bit but most importantly she's got rid of Cursed oh this game is all about you it uses up your actions <laughs> it really does use up your actions because you we, we are one deem away from from moving on with the scenario Zoe's got rid of cursed, which is good, and also uh, a doom in the in the in the same time, and also removed the terror as well, which is good. So that's it for the action phase. We'll then move on to the encounter phase, and as always, we'll start with Zoe. Zoe is going to first of all have a terror encounter at north side because there's still cards on the top of the deck, and she is going to get. Nought or two to four, so it didn't really make any difference, but there we go. You hear a chanting voice carried out on carried on the wind, seeking to summon greater evil to this place. Test law minus one. So she's currently law of four because she's got a focus in it. So she's gonna be rolling three dice, needing fives and sixes now. And we are managing to clear these things. We are managing to clear these things. If you pass, you counter the stranger's efforts. If you fail, the storm intensifies. Place one demon in your space. So that is basically, as I've said before, Terry, usually when you pass, nothing happens. It's when you fail that causes you the problem. And then Zoe is going to have her normal encounter at... Riverside. Let's just take those two. There's two more terror cards left. Um, sorry, Northside. And she is going to get. She's at the train station. Train station. The train arrived despite the storm, and your friend is here. Gain an ally. Oh, okay. Can you have more than one ally? Yeah, an ally is a type of asset. Mechanical text instruct you to gain an ally, place it in your play area. Yeah, no, there's nothing that prevents you from having, I'll just sort of double check. Nothing that prevents you getting an ally. We have shuffled these, but again, we'll do a shuffle on the camera. Only a very quick one. Again, try not to do a cut. And then Zoe is gonna get Delilah, Delilah, Delilah O'Rourke, ally, Signica assassin, three health, two sanity. After you deal damage to a monster as part of an attack action, you may deal one additional damage to a monster in your space. Brilliant. That's very good for Zoe. So we will take her. Move the chef's knife down a little bit. Going to be running out of space soon. So she's now got three health. 
She's, Zoe's got an additional five health and five sanities. Right, going back to the train station again in our line, you notice the crew unloading a large number of crates. You try to see what is in them. Observation. Test observation. So, oh. Zoe is a measly observation one. So let's see what she gets. No, she fails. She fails. If you pass, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't do anything nasty. If. Oh, that's the clue one. Oh, I forgot that was the, sorry, that was the clue one, bugger. Okay, well, that's gonna go back in the, on the top of the deck and shuffled. So top two, two cards. goes there two terror cards on the top oh we didn't manage to get the clue that's annoying there we, never mind never mind so that's the encounter for zoe uh, oh monster face <laughs> i'm getting ahead of myself monster face sugar so we've done zoe's encounter <laughs> but the monster face is next my apologies early in the morning so this monster isn't going to do anything because it's exhausted but it will unexhaust as part of its step but it doesn't do its action because it says in the monster phase each monster each ready monster activates a step one usually by moving each engaged monster deals damage and horror and then each exhausted monster ready so let's just turn that around for, for a sec now the thrall is moving two, and it's heading towards lowest wheel, which is Preston. So it's gonna go one to there, two to there, because it's after Preston. Now, monsters don't have to pay uh, to travel. They just use it as a normal movement route. So it was there, one and two to move to there. So it's gonna be headed towards Preston in a second. And then the Wendigo activates, um, does unexhausts, okay? So that's it for monsters. There's no other monsters. We're not engaged with any monsters down here. And there were no other monsters lurking about. Oh, we've got the ravenous predator. Yes, we have. Move directly and engage towards the lowest will which again is Preston. So it's going to move. What's its move? What does that little symbol there mean? Move directly to Hunter. Move directly to and engage the lowest Oh, I think that just goes, I think it just flies straight there. I think he does. So it's a hound of Tindler, so yeah, so that's gonna fly. Doesn't worry about it and it directly engages with Preston. So then it goes, it's got three health, minus one strength, minus one observation. It's got, it's gonna attack for one and one. So that's part of the move action. It's going to move. It's going to then engage Preston, and then it's going to um, attack Preston. So it's going to attack him for one and one. Preston will be able to deal with that. So uh, Money Talks has got three sanity on it. So. I'm going to put one on Money Talks and then the one health is going to go on Chuck, Chuck Fergus. Actually we'll put both on Chuck Fergus. Poor old Preston, but it's alright, it's alright, we can, we can deal with that. So let's just make sure again, no other monsters 
lurking about the place. We've moved the loop in thrall, we've done the Wendigo, we've now done the Ravenous Predator. So that is the monster phase. Oops. And then we go to the encounter phase and we've done Zoe. <laughs> we've got a bit ahead of ourselves. We've got we've done Zoe. Um, and now we'll move to Kate, who is going to have an encounter at Central Kingsport. There's no terror there anymore, and there's no terror cards on there, so it's a straight up encounter. And she's at the Hall School. And it says, Principal Miles tells you, tells you that someone has been seen sneaking around the campus at night. You reassure him that you will catch the Prowler test observation. Well, Kate is a lovely observation for. She's got no focuses in it. So we're going to be rolling straight four dice. Which she passes. If you pass, you discover that the figure watching in the night is sympathetic to your cause and has been patrolling the campus to keep the students safe. Gain one ally. Nice. So it's all about the allies this game. We'll put that back. We've already shuffled the ally deck up, so what we'll do is we'll take the top one off. And we're gonna get, or Kate's gonna get, Nick Kutra, freelance smuggler. Action, Became, become wanted to gain one curio with a value of four or less, two and two. Nah. Not overly great, but what are the curios? We've got the magnifying glass, gives him gives you plus one. Curio tome, you get plus two law as part of a ward action. Now that might be quite good, but do we want to become wanted? Anyway, that's it for Kate's encounter. We then move on to Preston, and a good job we've done the monster phase properly because he won't have an encounter because he is currently engaged with a ravenous predator so that is it for the encounter phase we then go on to the ever so delightful mythos phase okay and we're going to start off as we always do with zoe and we'll get the camera up so we can see what we're going to get. We are going to get a monster, or spawn monster. First one for Zoe. So let's see what we're going to get from the back of the deck. Altered Servant. Monster, human thrall, moves to spawn at the unstable space, patrol, move, toward unstable space engage most clues okay so the unstable space at the moment is the train station the train station which is where zoe is oh okay so becomes engaged with zoe and it is two health Minus no strength, minus one observation does give us a remnant one and one. So again, we'll we'll pick him up in a second. So that was the first one for Zoe. Second one is a clue. We're going to spawn a clue, and the clue is going to go at downtown. So. One clue onto downtown. Top two cards. Shuffle them up. Back on the deck. So that is it for Zoe. Then we're going to go to Kate, who's going to draw. Spread do. So we're going to spread Doom, so the back of the card is going to be Central Kingsport and we're going to spread Doom at Neil's Curiosity Shop. That's now got four Doom on it. 
and Neil's curiosity shop becomes the unstable space. That's the first one for Zach and for Kate, and then the second one for Kate is a blank. Then we move on to Preston. He's going to get oh a gate burst. Good old gate burst. Taking the top card of the event deck, which is East Town. Place a Doom on each area. Oh dear. One, two, three, onto East Town. We'll do that in a second, just so you guys and girls can see. That's now caused an issue over here. Let's finish the gate pile stuff because we need to take these out. And we're going to shuffle them up. And then they go in the back of the deck. That's that. And then what happens over here is because we've reached, when a neighborhood has six or more doom, remove all doom from one space in that neighborhood and place one doom on the scenario sheet. So we're gonna take this five off of here. Those go back in there. When we're gonna put one doom on the scenario sheet, which means when there are four or more doom on the scenario sheet, add 103 to the codex and return this card to the archive. Okay, so 103. What's going on? 103, we've got 103. Put that there for a second. Crawl, crawl, hunger. Return this card to the archive, just double checking, so making sure that goes, and that was a 91, so let's just put, put it back in order, just so we don't muck up our stuff going forward. 91. Okay. Endless winter. The winter storm intensifies, threatening to bury the entire region in ice and snow. Ithaca's power continues to grow as its influence spreads like a cancer. If this taint continues to spread uncontested, the Windwalker will be able to pour enough of its essence into the thralls that plague you to birth a new ancient one. Soon your only option soon your only option to stop this threat will be to summon the Windwalker into your world. Whether you hope you can defeat it where you hope you can defeat it directly. Add a gate burst token and a terror token to the Mythos Cup. Okay. What have I done with those? Bear with me. So gate purse token and terror token are added. Add one token and one token to the resource cup. So they've gone in there. And then also we've got, when there is 10 or more doom on the scenario sheet, discard all markers from play and any number of clues among, among the scenario sheet and all investigators. If a total of five clues and or markers were discarded this way, add card 102 to the codex and return this card to the archive. Otherwise, flip this card. Okay, so we want to get clues and stuff. Okay. 
So we've got four on there at the moment. Right. So that was it for the first um, thing. Pull for Preston. And then the second. Oh, God, let's go. Give that a good old shake up. And he's going to get. What's he going to get? Boom. Doom. A doom. Spread doom. <laughs> East Town. And it's going to go at Hibbs Roadhouse. Only one on there. So Hibbs Roadhouse is going to get one. Hibbs Roadhouse becomes the unstable space. Okay. Right, so that is it for the Mythos phase. That's it for Preston. Okay, we now go back to the action phase. Right, we really need to kill this Wendigo. But Preston needs to deal with this ravenous predator. <laughs> four, five dice, minus one is four, three health, ouch. He's got no dollars, Preston's got no money. things first you know, I'm going to attempt to, to, to bind to bind the ravenous predator I'm going to start off with Zoe we've got to get on with this we've got to get on with this there's too much mucking about now so Zoe is going to move in to the curiosity shop no she's not no she's not she's going to attack <laughs> she's going to attack the altered servant She's going to attack the altered servant that she's engaged with. Yep, yeah, so first things first, she is going to attack the altered servant. So she's going to be rolling three dice as normal. She gets plus one strength because she's focused, and Chef's Knife gives her plus two. So let's see what she gets. That is three hits, uh, sorry, two hits. That's all that we need to kill the Altered Servant. So he is dead. But he has got the Remnant side sign on him. So, so Zabi gets uh, Remnant for her first action. And for her second action, she is going to take this clue and put it in her play area to deal two damage to the Wendigo. That's what she's going to do. Two damage to the Wendigo. And that is it for Zoe. Then we've got Kate or Preston. Preston's currently engaged with the Ravenous Predator. He's 
It's very doubtful he's going to kill that in one hit. He's rolling four dice, five dice, back to four dice, and he needs three successes. Ah, but I've got the beast within, which means I could roll four, five dice and ignore all other modifiers. Right, so let's try doing that first of all. So I'm going to perform an attack, and I'm going to test law, which is two. Or do I focus first of all? I'm going to focus law first of all. I have got a focus limit of three. That is my third focus. So I'm now at three law. So first action, which I can do in combat, is to focus. I'm then going to roll three dice for his law. Three dice for his law. Ah! Which I fail. I'm going to spend his observation focus to re roll one of those. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. This is where the this is where the dice start to let me down. So we don't do the beast within. So I don't do that, but I still attack. When you perform an attack action, you may test law. If you pass, you can roll five dice. So I'm still now going to just roll in the normal modifiers, which is four dice. Four dice. Five dice, minus one for the Ravenous Predator's stats. I need three successes here. Oh, boom! Preston didn't let me down. Preston didn't let me down. Three damage to the Ravenous Predator, which kills it and gives him a remnant. That goes to the top of the pile. Preston gets the remnant. I need to just put, try and put another clue. I need to try and put another clue or a research test. I just used that to bloody do the reroll. He's gonna draw, he's gonna do, what do I do a ward? Law is two. Hmm. I'm gonna attempt an observation test with Preston to see if we can get one of those clues onto the scenario sheet, which we do. Test observation, place clues equal to your test result on the scenario sheet. Well, we have two fives. Preston is on fire. So two clues are going to go on to the scenario sheet. And that is Preston Dunn. That was pretty decent. That was pretty decent. For, uh, it started off pretty dodgy, but it ended up pretty decent. How many health? I think it's seven. Four plus three, yeah. Uh, oh, additional two health per investigator. Sorry, is that six? That's ten. Ouch, ten health. And I think we know what <laughs> Kay's turn is going to be pretty boring, I think. Um, but she's going to do... I oh, can only do one action. 
one action per you can never do you can only perform one action once per round so Kate's first action is going to be to take a clue off the scenario sheet and put two damage onto the Wendigo which takes him to four so it's nearly halfway there That's her first action. Her second action, she's going to attempt to bind him again because I don't want that terror creeping up. So she's going to do a binding action. So she gets four dice, three dice natural, plus one for. Um, her focus in it and also Eben's journal plus two So this is her second action and she's going to attempt to bind the Wendigo again Which we get it smashed it Wendigo is exhausted again But she does take another sanity for that takes her to three of seven so she's gonna to stop doing that really she's got she hasn't got any remnants or stuff but she's at three sanity now and that's it that is it for the action phase we then go to the monster phase <laughs> let's get this right so first of all, we're going to move monsters. So this Lupin Thrall is going to move in and engage with Preston. Lupin Thrall is uh, four health, no minus to strength, minus two to evade, got a remnant. As part of an invade action, you may spend one remnant and one to the dice for a result. Okay, enough. Four health again. Cheeky. Chunky bugger. Um, now, are there any other monsters? Kate's not engaged with any monsters. Zoe's not engaged with any monsters. There's no monsters sneaking around in the travel areas, which is what we've missed before. Uh, so we've, we've moved any monsters. Uh, the engaged monster actually deals damage. Um, Deals damage. He does two and one. Two health and one sanity. So we'll put one sanity onto good old Chuck. Actually, I'm going to put one sanity onto Chuck and one health, which kills him because he's not really. When performing a move action, monsters do not engage. You're not really that bothered about that. So one on him. So what that effectively means is one damage goes on to Preston and poor old Chuck takes one for the team. But Chuck, when you when you work for the Albanians, buddy. What do you expect? You're gonna, things are gonna happen. So that's it for the monster attacking. Um, that's dealt damage and any exhaust monsters ready. So the Wendigo ready, but importantly hasn't spread terror. Then we go on to the encounter phase. And as always, we'll start off with Zoe. She continues to be in the train station at Northside, so she's going to take a terror test to start off with. It's at two. Uh, so someone has left a, left a length of rope knotted around an ice encrusted tree. Test law minus one. So she's four law, so she's going to be three law. Four law. She passes. If you pass, you realise the pattern of knots is a coded message directing you to shelter from the cold. That's that, that's another one gone. Um, 
so that's Zoe's in, oh no, Zoe then needs to do a proper one at north side. Oops, proper one at north side. And she's gonna get, she's at the train station, not a clue one. The shipping crate smells of briny seawater and a voice in your head compels you to try and pop it open. Test will. Well, now, this is where Zoe's gonna come into her own. <laughs> Famous last words, four wheel, no focus is in it, so straight four. And she only just passes. Um, if you pass, you shake your head clear and collect the pass you gain here. Gain one common item if you fail, blah, blah, blah. So what is she gonna get for a common item? There we go, these are the common items. So we've got liquid courage for one, we've got first aid kit for two, magnet iron glass for one, painkillers and a secret tone. So let's have a little think about what we're gonna have there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the painkillers, gives a plus two health. We'll take the painkillers and then something else comes out, which is, oops, occult scripture. You get plus two observation as part of a research action. Nice. Hopefully I didn't just knock the dice cow all over the place, mate. So that's Zoe's encounter done. We'll move on to Kate. And Kate is at Central Kingsport. What's she going to get? And she's at the high school, all school. We have another visitor today, Victor Bryant says. You, you two might have a lot in common. She introduces you to a stranger who's sorting through heavy boxes in the basement. Gain one ally. <laughs> okay. Um, we need to move away from the whole school because she's getting tons of allies here. So we're going to get Prudence Douglas, ally, pragmatic, occultist. After you assign one or more horror to this ally when casting a spell, you may deal one damage to a monster in your space or an adjacent space. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay, so that's Kate. She's got Prudence Douglas now and um, Nick Couture. Prudence Douglas is good for her. And it also goes on to then say, having ser already searched her you here, you suggest moving on. Test influence. She's an influence of two. Fail. We fail. Um, lucky cigarette case. No, that's not going to do anything. Research note says once per round when you would re roll a die, you may add one to the result of that die instead. Lucky cigarette case says. Add one, it's not going to be enough. So, oh, if you fail, strain yourself sorting the massive tomes again, suffer one damage. Okay, we're going to suffer one damage. That could go on to Nick. Nick can take that. And that is it for Kate's encounter. And then we're going to go on to Preston's encounter. He does, oh no, he's engaged with loop in thrall, so he doesn't get an encounter. He's done. We then move on to the mythos phase. Okay, right, we will start off with Zoe. 
she is going to get a blank. So he gets a blank. And then she is going to get terror. Spread terror. Place one terror hoking in the indicated neighbourhood. So we are Zoe. <laughs> so that's going to go to three. Then attach the top card to north side. North side, again the terror down, it's now going back up again. So that's that, that's, but that's two done for Zoe. Then we're going to go to Kate, who is going to get Terra. One Terra in Central Kingsport. One Terra on the top of the card. And that's the second one for Kate. A headline, delightful headline. So Kate's second is headline, and that's going to be headline. Add this card to the codex and discard all other rumor headlines. Discard the item in display with the highest value. Whilst this card is in the codex, reduce the size of the display by one card. Okay, fair enough. One, two, three, one, three, three. Uh, let's go with the cult scripture. That can be discarded. So we're down to four. So that's it for Kate. And then we move on to Preston. Gate burst for Preston. Delightful, gate burst for Preston. Uh, take the top card of the event deck. Downtown. Downtown. That's not too bad. One in each space. One, two, three. Take these cards, there's one. And they go in the back there, like that. That's, that's the first one for Preston. And then the second one is going to be that one. Oh, that one, which is spreading doom. You spread doom in East Town, and it goes to Hibbs Roadhouse. Hibbs Roadhouse and Hibs Roadhouse becomes the unstable space. And that is it for the Mythos phase. And that is it for episode three. A lot going on, a lot going on. We managed to pick up some really useful allies. We've killed some, we've killed some monsters. We've taken a big chunk off the Wendigo. We've still got another um, clue on the scenario sheet and we've got a clue in the bank Zoe's got a clue as well so we could we could just literally ping this blinking thing off and maybe do do it some damage but anyway I hope you're enjoying the playthrough I really am and uh, we'll see how Preston how Zoe and how Kate managed to uh, navigate their way through this icy horrific uh, Arkham. We'll see how they do in the next one. Tutty bye for now.